Hi there, it's such a beautiful day outside, I couldn't resist coming outside and trying to do the second episode of uh, Why Physics is So Simple. And I, the first episode was about scaling. The, this, the, this one I want to talk about um, order of magnitude estimation and how remarkable it is and how it allows you to do things by magic. For example, let's all take a deep breath. That wasn't to relax before the episode. That was to ask the question, well, actually point out something remarkable, one of the things I love teaching students about, which is that with every breath you take, it's quite possible you're breathing in atoms from the dying breath of Julius Caesar when he said, et tu Brutus. Now that seems so remarkable. How could we possibly know that? And the answer is just to an order of magnitude estimation. So let's, let's, uh, Let's, let's, let's think about this. First of all, let's ask for the volume of a, of a human breath. I'm, I'm braving this rain of, of pollen that's coming down here in Oregon right now. But in any case, um, so I take a deep breath. It's the famous balloon of galaxies on, only one's left. Well, that had a lot of pressure. But how much do I, would, would I think when I take a deep breath? Uh, maybe one liter? Some, this is a little smaller than a milk bottle, but of course there was a lot of pressure on it. So I, let's just say I breathe out about one liter worth of air when I breathe out. What's a liter? Well, a liter is 1,000 cubic centimeters. That's 10 to the 3 cubic centimeters. I'm going to use scientific notation here. And powers of 10. That's all we need. 10 to the 3 cubic centimeters. Now, let's ask the question, What's the volume of the atmosphere? Now that's now. How can we know that? Well, let's. Well, we can approximate it. Take the Earth as a sphere. Of course, we know that, just like a cow. And let's consider the atmosphere around the Earth, which is a little offside right here. How can you figure the volume? Well, you may remember that if I look at a room that's, uh, um, and I'm trying to find the volume of, say, a box. I, what do I do? I multiply the length times the width times the height. The length times the width times the height. That's the area times the height. So the, the volume is area times height. So all we have to do to estimate the volume of the atmosphere is calculate the surface area of the Earth and then multiply it by the height of the atmosphere, which we can estimate. Well, how do I know the surface area of the Earth? Well, again, I can estimate it. I will keep pi's here. So I'll just say the area of the Earth is 4 pi r squared, where, where um, r is the radius of the Earth. Okay, what's the radius of the Earth? Well, I know that the circumference of the Earth is about 24,000 miles because I know from having traveled around it. You can work it out, just take the size of the United States and figure out what percentage of the world it is. And, uh, and you can work out it's about 24,000 miles and, and, um, and, um, and, uh, that makes, uh, uh, since the radius, the circumference is 2 pi r, that's about 6 times r, that means um, the radius is about 4,000 miles. But I've got this in centimeters, so I want to turn this into kilometers, uh, and, and about 1.5 kilometers per mile, so that's about 6,000 kilometers is the radius of the Earth, I can estimate that. So this is 4 pi times 6,000 squared, but what's 6,000? 6 is 6 times 10 cubed squared. Now I can calculate this so much more quickly. 4 pi is, pi is 3, 4 pi is 12, so we'll make that about 10. And then if I want to square these things, I square 6, so that's 36. I square 10 cubed, that's 10 to the 6. So I get, and that's, and that's, um, uh, and that's uh, in kilometers squared, right? And so this is uh, 10 times 36, that's about 400, times 10 to the 6 kilometers cubed. But how many meters in a kilometer? A thousand. A fa and how many centimeters in a meter? A hundred. So that's 10 three cubed times 10 squared, that's 10 to the fifth. And when I square it, that's 10 to the tenth. So this makes it 10 to the tenth square centimeters. That's the area of the Earth we just estimated in um, uh, uh, just roughly and quickly using order of magnitude estimation. 
So this is 400 times 10 to the 6th times 10 to the 10th. 10 to the 6th times 10 to the 10th is 10 to the 16th. 400 is 4 squared times 10 squared. So this becomes 4 times 10 to the 18th square centimeters. Now what's the height of the atmosphere? Well, I know from flying in planes, I can go up about 5 miles and I'm up near the top of the atmosphere. So, and 5 miles is about 8 kilometers. I know from speeding on my car. So let's make this 10 kilometers. Well, 10 kilometers, a kilometer we now know is 10 to the 5th centimeters. So this is 10 to the 6 centimeters. So this is 10 to the 6 centimeters. So now we've worked out that the volume of the atmosphere is about 4 times 10 to the 24 square centimeters. Why do we need to know that? Well, let's consider what the fraction of the atmosphere in a single breath is. Well, the fraction is 10 to the 3rd over 4 times 10 to the 24. Because exponents are so easy to deal with, we can take 10 to the 3rd and, and 10 to the 24, and that's 10 to the 3 minus 10 to the 20, mi that's 10 to the 3 minus 24, so that's 10 to, 10 to the minus 21. And this is 1 quarter times 10 to the 21, or about 2 times 10 to the minus 22. So that's the fraction of the atmosphere in a single breath. Now, that's, now we can ask, okay, how many, how many atoms or molecules of oxygen are in a single breath? The only thing you have to remember is the one thing I remember, so one of the numbers I remember from high school, that basically in a cubic centimeter of more or less water or something like what, well, maybe in a cubic centimeter of, of, of any light substance, there's about 6 times 10 to the 23rd particles. That's Avogadro's number. That's the only thing you really have to remember for this. It's about 6 times 10 to the 23rd in a cubic centimeter. But if I take a cubic centimeter liquid and turn it into oxygen, it turns into about a, a, a liter. So this is how many particles are in, are in a, a basically a liter of air. Now we can say how many particles of, assuming that Julius Caesar's breath over the history of the world is spread out uniformly over the atmosphere by now, we can say how many atoms of Julius Caesar's breath are in each breath we take. Well, that's the total number of atoms, 6 times 10 to the 23, about. We'll make it 10 to the 24, just to, just to make it simple, times the probability that one of them lies in your breath, which, which is the fraction of a single human breath over the volume of the atmosphere, which is 2 times 10 to the 22. When we multiply 10 to the 24 times 2 to the 10, 2 times 2 times 10 to the minus 22, we come up with 200. Maybe I overestimated, so maybe make it, instead of, instead of uh, 10, make it 1. It doesn't really matter. Well, that's between 20 and 200. And so we see in every breath we take, assuming Julius Caesar's breath uniformly spread throughout the atmosphere, we're likely to have between 20 and 200 uh, atoms of his final breath. And that connects you in a remarkable way to everyone who's ever lived, because everyone who's ever lived, if they've lived long enough so that their, that their breath has uh, molecules of, of oxygen or carbon dioxide that they breathe out is now throughout the whole atmosphere, which takes maybe 50 years or so to do, then, uh, then we're breathing in atoms that they breathed out, everyone. On my bad days, I remember that I'm breathing in atoms that Einstein breathed out the moment he put the last dot on his general theory of relativity. You can do remarkable things with orders of magnitude estimation. I was just reading one in, in, in relation to something I'm writing. Uh, in 1860, a guy named Arvid Hogbun, who was a professor of geology in Sweden, estimated he said, well, I know how much carbon there is in the atmosphere. Carbon in the atmosphere is basically, at that time, was about 300 parts per million in the atmosphere. And he said, well, if I compress all of that atmosphere into a liquid on the surface of the Earth, and the same the atmosphere is 10 kilometers high, and that's how many partic particles of carbon there are uh, as a fraction of the atmosphere, how deep a layer of carbon would it form if I compressed it down? And he did the same kind of order of magnitude estimation we just did, and he came up with about a one millimeter thick of carbon. 
if you took all the carbon in the atmosphere and compressed it down to one millimeter. And based on that, he said, it's quite possible that living systems have affected the carbon abundance in the atmosphere, which of course was a precursor to our later understanding that living systems can affect the burning, the, uh, the abundance of carbon in the atmosphere. You can do great things with the order of magnitude estimation, and that's why physics is simple. Take care.